Hello, good day, and welcome back to the channel with Yes, Me, Hideman 101. As you may know, or may be aware of, the other day, the Ring magazine has released its heavyweight world rankings. If you didn't know, the Ring magazine is the official, yes, the official world ranking system of boxing. Unlike in your belt system like the WBA, WBO, IBF, WBC, it will have their own ranking systems. Ring Magazine is the official order. It has no sort of other purpose and don't have that sort of corruption as a lot of the other governing bodies may have. And yes, you have guessed it. Today we're going through the world rankings from person to person. Who is at number one, all the way down to who is ranked 10. At number one, we start with the unified heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is ranked number one in the world, currently holding four of the five heavyweight belts. At number two, we have the Gypsy King. Tyson Fury, of course, the other undisputed heavyweight champion, only having not lost his belts in the ring, he vacated them after many issues with the British Boxing Board Control and other stuff where he was suspended after failing a drug test and many other things for love for the game. He is still currently though. The real heavyweight champion, as in the guy who beat the guy, the man who beat Vladimir Klitschko, the man who ruled heavyweight boxing with the iron fist. Only coming back this year, had three fights and had two wins and a draw with Deontay Wilder, who of course, Wilder, Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, is in third place in the world having been dropped one place with Tyson Fury after that draw with Tyson Fury in LA at the Staples Center so we now see AJ top Fury second and Wilder in third in number four we have King Kong Ruiz Ortiz of course Wilder's Previous fight before Fury. King Kong almost actually done Wilder in a fight and shook him up. The referee had to call a doctor in just to check Wilder to see if everything was okay. Before that, after that, Wilder come out and released all hell, destroying, destroying Ruiz Ortiz in the seventh round, I believe. And take keeping his belt. Number five. I'm alive. It's the next fight I'm going to the day after my birthday, December 22nd. My birthday is December 21st. I'm going to this fight. Dillian, the body stature, White versus Derek Jazor. You guessed it. Dillian White is ranked five in the world, according to Ring Magazine. Yeah, interesting for a big lineup. Could he be higher? Do you think he deserves to be higher than Ortiz? I certainly do, but again, call me biased or maybe not. I'm an AJ fan at the end of the day, so we have injury. I believe AJ at top, but Dylan White should be fourth. It'd be a close call. I'd love to see White versus Ortiz someday and someday soon after the fight with Chisora on the 22nd. Number six in the world, Alexander Povetkin. Of course, I was at this fight at Wembley Stadium on September 22nd, Povetkin versus Anthony Joshua. Povetkin was ranked third in the world and drops three places after that loss to AJ. It goes to show how close and how tight this heavyweight division is. One loss and you're not quite out of the top 10 depending on who you have lost to. Don't forget, AJ is the champion 
and Povetkin was the manager. So of course he wouldn't be losing too much from that loss to AJ as it would have been expected with number one versus number three. One of course being the highest. But Povetkin still up there in the top ten and is a very dangerous, very awkward fighter. At seven we see another former Joshua opponent. <laughs> Maybe he could have been higher if it weren't for the loss to Joshua and the back-to-back -back loss to Dillian White, not long later. Joseph Parker. Parker holds down the seventh spot in the world rankings. After two losses, could be fair, but again, former champion. Again, he was third in the world when he fought Joshua as well. So it is very tight to call. And I say this top seven... Is one of the closest and tightest ones to call. Don't put anything past Parker. He may have had two losses. But he's a very good, strong boxer. And can easily break back into the top three. With a handful of wins coming in a new year. At 80 itself, we find the big baby. Gerald Miller. The big American guy who weighed in at something like 300 um, Alms or whatever that weight is in his previous fight. The big man himself chasing Joshua. We've seen the headlines. I've covered the story of him and Joshua in America on the build up for the Povetkin fight. Again, he's a big name and a very, very big guy taking the heavyweight limit to the max. Gerald Miller is going to be a very tricky and hard guy who can take some heavy shots at nine we have the baby face of course Adam Kalaki fresh of his win over again a former Joshua opponent when Joshua won his IBF title off of Charles Martin very good and well rounded and easily deserves a top 10 place in the bottom part of it deserving to be so again you can argue and say number 10 may have a bit more over him, but we'll have to wait and see. Rounding up and finishing off the top 10, we have Kubrat Purev. Again, as I said, you could argue between the two, Karanaki and Purev himself. Purev was supposed to fight Joshua last year, but pulled out, leading to Carlos Takam fighting Joshua instead at Cardiff. Out of all other places. But after a fresh win for Kubat, Kubat Purev over Fury Fury, Tyson Fury's cousin, puts Purev back into contention and a mandatory for the WBO title held by one Anthony Joshua. Would he go through and take this fight? We'll have to wait and see. But again, this mandatory can be enforced during 2019. So that is a roundup of the top 10. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And who do you think, maybe where, and probably why you think that. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So get involved in the comments below. Don't forget, as ever, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.